Hey guys, it's MJ the Student Act Tree, and we're talking CT5 Chapter 7. And in this video, I'm going to be going through the gross premium. Now, the gross premium is the premium that is actually paid by the policyholder. And what it incorporates, it incorporates the benefit as well as the expenses. So the expenses I spoke about in the previous video, and the benefits is what we've done before with the net premium. So the gross premium incorporates both, both of these things. So because it includes expenses as well, it will be higher than the net premium. The net premium I've got written here is also known as the risk premium. And the gross premium is also known as the office premium. So that's good to remember in the test if it says calculate the office premium, you know that it's the gross and not the net. Now a very important uh, principle is the principle of equivalence and what this says is that the expected value of the future loss uh, must equal to zero and this happens when your expected present value of your premiums is equal to your expected pr present value of your benefits plus the expenses, also the present value. So for example, um, the gross premium for a whole life assurance. Let's say we've got a whole life sum assured um, of 50, it's payable at the end of the year to a life who's aged 47. Um, the initial expenses are two, renewal, renewal expenses are 5%, excluding the first, and termination is 0.5. Calculate the level annual premium. Now the big trick with um, this gross premium, it's the renewal expense. Initial expense is very easy to deal with, termination expense is easy to deal with but renewal is it's a little bit tricky because it's excluding the first premium so when we come down and we look here we can see that what I've done over here is I've made it I've included um, renewal expense for the first year and then I've had to subtract it again and the reason I've done that is just so that my expected values are all at the same ages but a lot of people in the test, they do forget to include, well, include to remove um, the first expense. Um, as you can see, initial expense is up front, and the termination expense, you could almost even link it up with the benefit, which you've done there. So that's quite easy. Um, the gross future loss variable, it's yeah, pretty much the same as the, the net future loss uh, variable, except this time we are introducing expenses. So you can see F over here is the terminal expense. Um, also look at the I, which we know is the initial expense. And here we see the renewal expense, and they've got in a nice formula with the subtracting one. Um, yeah, and then the equation of value, you can see where the expenses come in. Now what we've done is we've just made, um, remember the equation of value, is that equation with the expected value and set to zero. And you can see um, there's our terminal expense, our initial and our renewal. And this is how you deal with expenses when it comes to bonuses. Um, again, it's, it's not really difficult to add on expenses. It's more about just being careful and it makes it look a little bit difficult, um, but it's not actually that bad. What is quite bad is, like I said in the previous videos, are these type of questions. What is the minimum premium to charge so that the probability that your loss uh, variable is greater than zero and we want that probability to be less than 5%. So what I've got here are the steps that we need to do. So I'll run through, you know, there's four of them. I'll run through them quickly with you. So what you want to do first is write down an expression for your loss random variable. And I'm getting that from this guy here, gross future loss variable. That's a, you don't have to learn that formula because you'll be able to derive it once you get into the subject. Um, so you want to write that down. Most importantly, and this is, once you've done this, then the rest is kind of easy, is you want to write it down as a random variable. This VKX plus one is a random variable, and this A um, angle KX plus one is also a random variable. So that's the big trick, okay? That is an expected value. Oh, here, let me use these here, okay? 
okay? Expected value are these guys here, written in the green. Random variables are these ones here. They look similar, but they're not, okay? Very important that you write down the random variable. Most other questions you do in this course, you'll be using the expected value, but with these ones, you want to do the random variable. Okay, hopefully I've drummed that in uh, enough and that none of you guys make this mistake in the exam. Okay, because then the question is quite easy. So for a life assurance, L is large when KX is small. Okay, that I used a little bit of logic. Um, what I'm saying is that what we're doing is the loss is going to be great if the person dies soon. Why is that going to... Why is that going to be? Because it means he hasn't paid um, a lot of premiums. So if he takes out a premium of 10 million and he's paying, you know, 1 in 1,000 premiums and he dies after one premium, we've lost a big chunk. So, yeah, L is going to be large when KX is small. Remember, KX is a random variable. And we want it to be less than T so that it's equal to 0 0.05. And this is where we can use the life tables to find two integer values that t must lie between and set k equal to the integer part of t. Why must we set it to the integer part? Because it's not a complete life, it's the curtailed life. Okay, so what we do is we go tpx, we look for 0 0.5, and what we can do is you just take the age, you times it by 0 0.5, and then you look for this Alex plus t, and then you subtract and you get your age. And then yeah, you calculate P by setting L equals to zero when KX is equal to that. And yeah, it, it is a little bit confusing. So please do lots of examples of these type of questions. Don't think that this video enough is going to be all right to help you get through this. Um, and then yeah, I basically just got some more um, examples. But I think we've spoken enough about um, this stuff, percentile premium calculations, um, yeah, again, it's just another example that we've covered on, and then gross premium valuation basis, um, these are just the, the different assumptions that we would use, and why would you use a different assumption for your reserves than for your premiums, so that's something nice to think about, and um, yeah, what else have we got? Gross premiums, prospective reserves. I think let me do reserves in another video. And then, yeah, because we don't want this video to go for too long. Oh, sorry. That was the wrong thing to move. I'm trying to find out what the count is. But I'll make that in another video and then explain all this stuff as well. So gross premium valuation basis and all that will be done in another video. But yeah, this is... An example here you can slow the camera down and you can see that's another example but yeah let me go make a video on that other stuff thanks for watching guys